Hello and welcome everyone to a new lesson in Erdos Imagine and um, Remote Sensing Techniques. And today I would like to show you how to calculate manually the normalized differential vegetation index using Erdos Imagine and some ETM plus data. First of all, we have to make sure that we have the um, raw data for calculating the NDVI. So as I have said, we will uh, download them from the lens set or the Earth Science Data Interface uh, page from the Global Land Cover Facilities. You can find them using the um, hyperlink to um, landcover.org. And I will use today um, some data sets from Mongolia again. And so we have a summer scene here, which is provided by the USGS. I'll download them. And due to the fact that the, or you should probably know that the NDVI is calculated using the bands number four, so the near infrared, and the band number three for the red, in, or the information of red reflectance, um, to calculate the NDVI. So therefore, we will need these two bands. So there's band number three, and there. Oh, wait a second. Just download it. And there's a band number four. Download them both and wait a second. As you can see here, we I have already um, depressed or extracted the data from the archive. But there's another thing we need for calculation of the NDVI, and these are some kind of statistical values or ap apparature operator, I don't know the English word for that, uh, values um, on how the sensors are measuring the data. And this is given by the MET file. So also download this please to your working directory. So this is probably um, the NDVI calculation directory. And yeah, just have a look in that. So we will uh, go to the folder. Open this MET file with an editor of your choice. And as you can see here, we have um, some kind of really general data. So it's a Landsat 7 satellite or system, uh, and the sensor is ETM plus. You have the acquisition date, the path, and the row values, and also some kind of um, locational values. So um, the degrees of the uh, of the centers and the and the corners. Then you have some file names and also the projection information. Uh, but what, what is really interesting for interesting for our um, for our usage today is the um, sun value, so the sun azimut and the sun elevation, and also the uh, values of the minimum maximum radiances. Each band or each sensor or pump band of the sensor can measure. So the, you will have some values over here for each band one. And there's also uh, some kind of um, minimum maximum pixel values. And maybe you can remember that the then the lens data uh, or the raw data we, we are using to, or we, we can see here. So just present you the band number four. And as you can see here, fit image to window, you can see a lot of white and black pixels and also gray ones and what is what is each value saying it's just a digital number and this is a file pixel value so you have the restriction that it should be between 1 and 255 due to the fact that it's stored in a 16 or no, 8 bit unsigned format and the zero values are showing that there's no information available so it wasn't measured so this we need to keep kept in mind. So um, if you are calculating the NDVI manually, and I will show you how to do that using the model and add as imagine, you first have to you first you have to um, transform these digital numbers to radiances. And due to the fact that we have a minimum maximum file pixel value of 1 and 255 and minimum and maximum possible measured radiances at the sensor given by the MET file, we can transform using a linear approach these values or the digital number values to 
radiances is. And if you're just Googling for um, for um, the prob or the the um, the problem on how to calculate um, radiances or digital numbers to radiances, you will surely come across this formula. So it says um, you will have a minimum, maximum, or maximum, minimum possible measured value in the scene. Then you have the given minimum, maximum digital numbers in the scene. Let me get it right. The spatial radiances is, yes. And then you are using this as the uh, as a slope of this linear function. Because if you are trying to, to convert this, I will, I will probably show you in, in, uh, in a short sketch this. Let me just stop for a second. See you soon. So let us look on this short sketch. So we have the digital numbers on the on the x-axis and the radians on the y-axis. And we are interested in a transformation, in a linear transformation from this values 1 and 255 to radians. So what we need therefore are minimum and maximum values of the radians. So let us go to the uh, to the MET file and uh, just Search for the values of the band number three. So you are having a maximum band or a maximum value of radiances for the band or of radians for the band number three given by the value 234.4. So go here, paste it. This is the maximum value. And the minimum value is minus five. So once again, go here, paste it. And Due to the fact that we are having a given starting point of of uh, of this um, of this uh, line, oh please go ahead. So the starting point is somewhere here, and the end point is up here. You can transform easily each value like this one here. To given uh, to to a radiance value, which is probably over here. So um, let me assume this is 117. Oh, what is going wrong here? So this is 117, which is probably some kind of some value on on the radiance, like I don't know, like let me suggest some wrong decision. Oh, something about maybe 90. And um, this is the thing we need to do now. So we need the slope of this line, and we need the starting point and the end points, um, which were given by the by the MIT file. And we will use this information in the modeler um, to calculate the radiance from each band, like the fourth band and the, and the third band. So first of all, we need the modeler, and as you may may already or still know. Go to this one, modeler, model maker, and for the modeler we need an input, a process, and output. Very simple. So we will connect these three elements, and the input is more or less one of the uh, one of the one of the raw data. So in our case now, it's the uh, third band now. Okay, go ahead. Declose int integer. That's fine for me. Everything is still okay. So, what is the process behind that? So, we are trying to make some uh, a ratio, and we will use this ratio to multiply it with another value, and um, that's it, I think. So, um, probably once more check with the formula. So, this is the ratio. This is our digital number. So the quantified, quantized, or quantized calibrated pixel value in digital numbers given. Then we have to subtract the minimum value, which is possible in our scene, which is normally one. And we have to add this minimum possible value in the, in the uh, radiances. So first of all, let's go to this ratio. So it's L max minus L min. Um, go again to this file. So L max is 
for band number three it's 234.4 so this minus this divided by Go once more to this q call max minus, minus q call min, and you can you can recheck it on the on the MIT file, but it normally should be. Um, it depends on the on the or, or, or no, it, not, it does not depend. So in ETM plus, you can be sure that it's one and two hundred fifty five. So it's two hundred fifty five and one, and this is two hundred fifty five. No, oh, wrong keystroke. Come on. But there we are. So it's 255 minus 1. So this is the first ratio. And then we have to multiply it with the digital number in the scene or in the band minus our minimum possible value, which is 1. And this is still to, or we have to add the possible minimum measured value in the scene which is in our case minus um, minus five here so given this this is the calculation we need to we need to use so we'll just add some braces over here so this this should be the calculation and we will press ok and due to the fact that we are calculating a ratio and we are um, going away from this 8-bit unsigned values, we have to make sure that the file name, uh, that, the, that the possible um, data type is different. So I will just make radiance suspend 3.img. That's fine for me in the moment. And the data type isn't anymore unsigned 8-bit. You are not possible to store uh, ratios in that value. So we will have to change this to float signal and this should be fine. So float double is much more space on your hard disk. Float signal should be fine for our case. And um, you can probably go ahead and using this calculation and we'll just try to run it as it is. Um, maybe we will get some problems with the zero values in our scene but as you can see here everything is working fine. Um, the radiances are calculated. I will go ahead and check the result in a new viewer. So go ahead, file, open, rust layer, please. Um, go to the working directory. And this is radiances band 3. Fit image terminal. As you can see, there's not so much difference between uh, both of these. Um, both of these pictures. Um, oh no, um, I was using the band number four. Go ahead, take another viewer. Also use file or raster opener. This is given as TIFF. Band number three and fit image. As you can see, there's no real difference between the two. But it is, but it's okay because we just we just transformed it linearly. So if you're changing contrast in this way, you're not changing the inner proportions of digital numbers, and you're not changing you know proportion of radiances to uh, the surrounding. But we need to make sure that they, that there's a radiance given. So as you can see here, there's a five pixel of 52 in this case, and by um, by linking both viewers geographically um, you can check both values in both scenes so it's um, seventeen in this and eleven point seven in the other scene so now we have calculated it uh, calculated the radiance is given by the band number three. We have to make sure that we are also calculating this for the band number four. So go ahead, change this model to band number four, go into calculation scheme, check the values for the bands. So in this case, the maximum value has changed and also the minimum value has changed. So we will use this on our. Uh, 
and the minimum will be just minus 5.1 so there we go and as you can see the the um, used input has already changed here so this is fine um, change the name here again so it's been number four and go ahead in the calculation so calculate this as well and then we have both radiances and we need to go further by uh, converting these both information so now we are calculating the radiances and we need to transform these radiances to reflectances so uh, we need to make sure that we are changing the um, the the way um, or the 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 energy that is coming from the sun is changed during the um, during the way onto the onto the Earth's surface and back to the sensor, and we have to make sure that we are using using the information of the of the atmosphere and also on the day of of, of the year so the the earth is not turning on a cycle circle around the uh, around the sun it's more elliptical and so the energy which is given by by uh, a beam of light is changing over the year and also over uh, the the inclination of the sun uh, above the Earth's surface. So we need the, this information to calculate the uh, real reflectances. So if you're looking onto the internet uh, how to calculate or how to trans transform uh, radiance values to reflectance values, you will surely come across the Lancet Handbook, which is uh, quite or which is a great handbook for um, for getting some information on how to process some um, that data and you will have this formula given here which is said that you can calculate the reflectance using pi or p 3.14 and the radiance at the, at the sensor then a given distance in astronomical units uh, from the earth to the sun square this and the distance you have to know is um depend or depends on on the uh, julian date of the year so we need the date of the year uh radiance we have already calculated pay we don't have to calculate this and then we have in the in the in the uh, in the lower part of this ratio is the ms uh, the mean solar exo atmospheric irradiances which is some kind of um, buffer value on on um, on how to decrease uh, decrease the radiance at the sensor uh, in a given band. So you will have this values over here, and the last one is the cosine of the solar zenith angle in degrees. So this is. Um, bothering me a little bit uh, because look on the look on some kind of um, on, on a definition on the solar zenith angle so as you can see here you have a solar zenith angle of zero degrees if the sun is in zenith. so and if you're calculating this then you have nearly a cosine of that of about one so just look on the curve of the cosine so if you have nearly no, uh, if you are having the the sun in the in the, in the, in the, in the near to the azimuth of 90 degrees or near near on on the on the highest part um then the lower part of the of this ratio will increase probably go to one if the sun is near at the horizon so should be the case when this solar zenith angle is increased up to 90 degrees then the cosine is nearly zero which means that the cosine of of, of uh, or this uh, low value will increase the reflectance due to the fact that uh, dividing by a half means doubling the incoming value, which is the radiance in our case. So there's a little struggle around these both definitions. So I think that we need to use 
the real given value in the MAT file, which is probably here the elevation. And in this case, it's 50 degrees, um, which is quite useful due to the fact that we are in the northern hemisphere and it's a little bit after after the uh, after the 21st of uh, of June and 50 degrees is much more than 45 degrees which is quite fine in our area and so we need this value for the calculation of the cosine so we'll just copy and paste it into our model and go in here and as you may know we need this model to calculate um, to calculate the for um, the reflectance so first of all we need an as an input not the raw data we need um, the calculated radiances so we need the radiances in band number, band number three as the input data so it's given as a flow value just go again to the formula um, where it is so it's here and now we need P oh, we'll just leave this open for four reasons so we need P 3.15 which is enough for reasons just to show you uh, then we need the radiances which are stored in radiances band 3 then we need to multiply this value by the given distance uh, regarding a Julian day of the year. So go again to the MET file and you can see there the acquisition date. The acquisition date is the 20th of August 2001 and you can also find in Lancet handbook this uh, this Excel sheet. So um, we need that we have astronomical units for every day of the year. So we need the day of the year given by the 20th of August. So you can go again into the internet search for the search for these values. So 20th of August. August is up here. The 20th is the 232nd day. Yeah. So 232. Go again to the model. 200 and no to the axle file 232 um, there's an astronomical distance astronomical distance of 1.011 and we need to square this so go again check for the um, check for the the no oh, just make it like this so keep it quite and simple um, so this is a squared astronomical distance and we, will, we need to divide this by go again here to the formula the uh, um, the extra atmospheric irradiates irradi values so we have the band number three and this is more or less 1533 and we need to multiply this by the cosine of 50.7. So I think there we go. Rescale this so it's reflectances band 3. Okay. And let's try whether this will work. So calculation is fine. Computing statistics is also going on. So let's prepare a new viewer to check the results. So we will open this to an IMG. And so we have the reflectances. And we should expect a value between zero and one due to the fact that it's just converting the input to an output. So as you can see here, these are quite low values and they are increasing um, by this. So um, due to the fact that they that the sun is uh, not so much high in the uh, or the azimuth isn't so high, um, the values of reflectances are very low in this case. So these are this is a band number three. We need to arrange this for the band number four. So 
there's another input file and there's also another value for this given which is more or less 1039 the cosine is still the same and also all the other parameters so we use this reflecting to span number four go ahead and there we are just calculate the model and then we can go to the informative part like calculate the NDVI so there's a lot of pre-processing in this in this in, the, in this in this model um, but normally all the all the software packages you can you combine you will probably use uh, on your on your scientific work uh, will have some kind of um, tool to calculate to automatically calculate the NDVI so this is finished now and what we will need to do is uh, just keep in mind the original uh, the original formula which is um, NER minus red divided by NER plus red. So it's band number four minus band number three divided by band number four plus band number three. So for the calculation of the NVI, we will just um, use the old model. We need to add another input data because we are now um, mixing up two different uh, two different rasters. First of all, the reflectances is in the band number four. There we go. Then we are having another input, the reflectances is in band number three. So use this. And the one behind that is more or less given by this formula, NIR minus red divided by NIR plus red. So we just have to minus red. The red is given by band number three and we will just some brackets and then the same into the other direction. So just summing up these both rasters and this, this is more or less the end of your eye so use this we will serve it here in a new raster which is the end of your eye manually float signal is fine as well and go ahead and check it out um, so I think this will take some time so the calculation is finished now and as you can see here we have the manually um, given result of our calculation so water bodies are marked as with red or no with, not with red but with black pixels here and you can make an inquiry of the pixel location and as you can see here there are really small values and if you are given of one indicating or indicates a healthy vegetation which is photosynthetic, photosynthetic active or photosynthetic which is active and growing and it's green and um, then you are also having this grayish ones um, there is no vegetation given and as you can see here the uh, the floodplain is um, full of vegetation uh, or active vegetation and also the slopes are um, photosynthetically active uh, due to the fact that you are having some forests over there and as I have said you can calculate this um, this values automatically given by the given for, uh, given by this some tools here so spectral enhancement indices there's this NDVI calculation but behind this NDVI calculation um, works just another model so let me show you file open and vegetation in dvi and as you can see here you have an input raster which is a layer stack and oh sorry which is a layer stack and no what i'm doing there i'm a little bit confused sorry it's late and um, so you have the input raster which is a layer stack called linear in this case and this layer stack 
have four or the two layers, the band number four and the band number three. You can just create a new layer stack out of the bands number four and three, just a two layered layer stack. Input it here, so this is uh, the infrared minus the, uh, the near infrared minus the visible, the visible rat, then the near infrared plus the visible rat. You then they are storing some kind of um, just temporary rasters. Then they are doing the other if um, differentiation, and uh, they are calculating the ratio between these both. And the ratio is um, stored in another temporary raster, and then they are calculating digital numbers again out of this data to decrease the file size. But um, I've just deleted these both parts and calculated it uh, and automatically done raster. So um, I was storing this raster. And I would like to show you the differences between these both. So just go ahead, there's the NDVR manually. Open another viewer. If you'd like to do it as well, just check out my videos, how to calculate the layer stack, how to um, use the raster calculator or the, the modeler for calculating um, sums and all like that. And just go here into this. And as you can see, here, it looks quite similar to this. So to get an idea about the differences between these both values, you can also use, of course, the uh, inquiry cursor to, to check the values here, so they are quite similar. Um, also, in the, we have minus or negative values in the in the lake, but how great or how big are the ad, um, differences between these both approaches? Um, because the manual calculation, as you have, as you have seen, um, is quite time-consuming. And you don't just want to have an idea about the about the uh, photosynthetic what a, what a different word a difficult word just about the the um, active vegetation in your area and just for this maybe the the automatic approaches are, are much easier to to compute of course as as we have probably seen so we will just go ahead into another modeler. And we will use now the input, the automatically raster and the manually created raster as an input. And we will calculate just the difference between this both. Oh no, something hasn't worked here. There we go. So it's this one. And we'll just create the differences between both of them store it as the diff.img okay and um, this is our floating raster delete if exists i've also already created one sorry for that so i'll calculate this just close all these other things here just to tidy up a little bit the desktop and um no nope. thank you and i don't need arc map in the moment so and there we have done, there we have done. Uh, we'll open the new viewer. Open the raster, look at the difference image. And what we can see here, there are a lot of differences, but how big are they? As you can see, they are more or less nearly, nearly stable around minus two. So go again, um, check the information, the histogram. As you can see, there's a little shift in the information. So it's about minus 0 0.2. Um, so the automatic given value is a little bit higher than the manically given value. And especially if you're looking here on these on these slopes. So these are northern exposed slopes and they are negatively given in that area. So this is just an idea. So there is, there is first of all, there is a difference between the automatically and the manually done approach. Second of all, do you care about this question you have to ask yourself? Because just look on the profile here. Just make a special profile. 
This looks spectacular. Whitish, blackish, sincere. And look at that. It's nearly nothing. Nearly no difference between these um, these pixels. And so, just to make sure that you are doing, if you just want to have an idea about the about the vegetational coverage and the activity of the coverage. Go ahead with them with the automatic approach. If you are using or if you are making some comparisons between different time steps and so on, you should not. Uh, I repeat that you should not use the automatic approach because of the inclinations of the sun, the differences in the in the um, in the uh, distances of Earth and sun, uh, and so on. So these are both some things you have to. Keep in mind, if you just want to have an idea, use the automatic one. I would do it like that. If you're using it for comparison between different time steps and different systems, use a manual approach. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy my video channel and see you soon.